standardization meets open source. That was the brief of these, these two days. Um, you know, we, we fortunately, we, we hosted a similar panel at DSP Leaders in May, and in that short time, it's been really encouraging to see how this discussion has, has moved along quite significantly in that time. Um, in April this year, Etsy and the Linux Foundation signed this Memorandum of Understanding, which was a significant move forwards in terms of collaboration. Just as we start, just to get things going, I wonder if you could give us an update on, on what's happened in the, in the five months since with, with this collaboration. Um, Heather, you're reaching for the microphone. Do you want to start off? There's a big shocker. I decided to grab the first open <laughs> mic. Um, so I think the, the, the big thing I can point to is there has been a project um, in, in ONAP that is implementing um, some of the uh, SOL um, specifications from the NFG to work on getting on uh, Etsy compliance um, within Mano. And I, I can also sort of see coming from that um, uh, an increased focus on sort of VNF testing that might be able to come out of that work as well to improve um, VNF compliance with um, Etsy Mano specs. So that's, that's one big thing that's gotten kicked off. Luis, do you want to continue? We're having to share the microphones around, so if you pass the microphones around. I know you're very dependent upon members, but have you got any good news for us as to how, how things might develop in the, in the future? Well, actually, actually setting this MOU is, is putting the carpet, and, and now it's, it's for all our members to come and, and go work together. Now they are, they are covered, they, they know what to do. I know there are big hopes in ZSM as well to move forward, MEC as well. Has, has some plans, so it, it's up to them to, to keep on uh, going in the, in the good uh, example. And none of this happens in isolation. It, it does require the buy-in from the vendors and the telcos, you know, this, this whole ecosystem. But is, is the existing vendor supply ecosystem, is, is it ready and able to deliver the necessary solutions and innovations that the telcos are, are calling for and require now, that fully leverage standards and open source. I mean, Diego, you're one of our two telcos on the panel. Are, are, we, are, we getting, are, are you getting what you need from the ecosystem here? Uh, well, yeah, I, I would say we are getting there. We're not there yet. Um, still, the, uh, the whole industry, I, I, I'm not going to blame only the vendors, in the spite of they are the main <laughs> <laughs> responsible for this. <laughs> no, but but it's, uh, in general, the, the culture of the whole industry is, uh, well, it has own resistances to, to these. Uh, so it's, we are getting there. There are uh, aspects in which uh, we are closer. Others are, well, slowly, but we are progressing. And, and as long as the, the thrust is continuous, we will we'll get there one way or another. Sebastian, do you, from Deutsche Telekom, do you echo the views? Definitely, I agree, but uh, if everything would be perfect, uh, I think we wouldn't have run the conference. So I think um, uh, definitely on the ecosystem side, uh, we will need to improve and we will see some developments there. And uh, I think we have some, uh, heard some, some good approaches and good ideas during the last two days. So uh, I'm, I'm really happy uh, about the outcome and... Um, uh, and also that that ecosystem was so prominently discussed here because uh, it's also from my perspective one of the key success factors uh, when we move uh, into the future of uh, operating our networks. I'm going to come and, and talk to um, the members of the panel, uh, especially our vendors um, in, in right now actually, um, because we're starting to hear of some interesting factors at play. We're, we're looking outside of telecoms for some inspiration and best practices, a lot of innovations happening in the open source world. Telcos are continuing to push this leadership role. So from our, our vendors on, on, the, on the panel, um, are you listening to what your customers, the telcos, are asking of you? Um, are you delivering what they really want in terms of supporting and aligning open source and standards? Yeah. Tanja, you've got your microphone. Yeah, maybe I'll take a stab at it. And before that, uh, if you allow, I would, I would like to add to the previous question in terms of ecosystem, right? Uh, what is happening from our experiences, and yesterday we were talking about the concept of network reliability engineering. The telcos, at the end of the day, would be measured on the reliability aspect, no matter what. And therefore, when it comes to such a diverse ecosystem now, the reliability has to be thought right up front when we do the sprint planning, right? And we are still working in silos, and we are not ashamed of accepting the fact that, yes, we are still working in silos. Though we are following agile methodology, the core team works separately, the access team works separately, and then the manual and orchestration comes into the picture. 
that will not work. When the ecosystem comes together from the perspective of delivering it and having the reliability thought right up front and embedded in the sprint design is quintessential. Thanks. Thanks. You rich. Yeah, okay. So definitely we listen to our customers more over there. We, we are working with them to understand the business needs, uh, to understand the challenges they face with, and to help them uh, to provide the, the solutions. Uh, it's very, very clear that uh, there is a muddled mix of SDOs, uh, open source communities, and honestly speaking, also customers' projects. Uh, each of them tackle different uh, pieces of uh, the automation. Uh, and they are not always coordinated. So definitely as a company, and you have seen today in the demo, we are striving for enabling end-to-end -end automation. So we are striving to help the industry to convert, uh, and we are putting a lot of efforts in that. Also, does, um, does experience in enterprise and cloud networking help? Um, customers are asking us for composable, agile, and less human involvement type software, right? Mm. That's what they want. Um, we are stopping at somewhere at around 70% because when you then go into reality, um, what, we ever, what we all deliver is uh, still requires too much human intervention, is not machine readable, um, there are not, no ZOL001 interfaces properly implemented, uh, REST standards are not properly done. So I don't think we're delivering, mm. honestly. I'll play the devil advocate. I think what we need to do is we need to go all the way to the end saying, okay, if we do an API which is, you know, machine readable, i.e. correct, then it has to be validated as correct. So there has to be an, uh, um, a web page where I can send my spec in and then it goes green or it goes red. And if it goes green, then I know I can give it to whoever's orchestrator it is and it's going to integrate. That's, that's what I believe. We, we don't need more standardization and open source. We need to do what we've done so far, so that we are able to actually become composable, become agile, and have less human intervention. Very honest answer. Diego wants to come in on this one, please. No, yes, because when you, when you mentioned this, that, uh, that brought to my mind uh, ongoing discussion that we are having in one of the NFE groups, precisely of what is the standard whether it is what is written in English or whether it is what is written in some formal language. Personally, I would prefer that we evolve as much as we can into something that is written in a formal language, that is verifiable, not necessarily directly translate, uh, uh, able to be translated into code, because then there are, there are secret things and there are optimizations and all the like, but something that you can verify. And the interfaces and the objects you are manipulating are there and written. And right now, I think we have the tools, or we should have the tools for that. We should. I'm not saying that we have them <laughs> yet. Precisely, when thinking about these uh, conclusions, probably, uh, I, I don't know if t talking about the commitment here would be too much, but precisely exploring that way, or the, the moving in that way, because it would be a, a very, very curious convergence between open source and standards. Uh, I mean, I was just going to sort of pop in with, you know, kind of the discussion around, you know, verification and things. You know, I mean, it's one of the things, you know, within sort of the open source groups, you know, specs and standards have long kind of known how to do some validation and, and compliance work. Um, and we've been sort of turning our attention to that, you know, in the open source communities. And it's... It's been challenging because it's bringing in this, you know, kind of traditional compliance mindset to sort of open source, but it's it's evolving and it's, you know, certainly a big focus area um, within LFN right now to figure out how to get more more verification and, and compliance testing of everything, you know, with with the things that are spec'd and the things that are implemented. You want to add something here? Yeah, I want to add another aspect to the discussion. You know, end-to-end uh, -end automation is a big deal, right? It will not happen in one day, right? And it's a journey, in my opinion, for the next years, right? And we need to learn as we go, right? There are a lot of challenges that still need even research, not even solutions, right? How you provide analytics when you don't have the entire data. Uh, how to gain the trust uh, of, uh, of the operators uh, for the machine. 
uh, how to ensure that the security framework is uh, put appropriately there. So it's, it's a journey and we need to learn and we need a lot of validation as we go to feed the information back into the standardization world. So it's another aspect that we need to consider in order to ensure that uh, there is a good alignment and synergy between the open source and the specification work. So what, what, what I'm hearing here, what we're all hearing here is there's, there's a lot of talk, the talk, there's a lot of ideas, there's a lot of thoughts, there's a lot of processes we all keen on and supportive of to see happen. But how do we avoid having to have this event here next year and repeat ourselves? You know, what, what really do we need to do to move on? Because everyone wants to move on and see some res actionable results. It's not, we agreed, it's not going to be easy. Um, but but what, is the, what is the format of these next steps? Are, are we looking at some kind of group declaration, road map, what, what, what's the mechanism? What, what possibly can we do to, to move things forward? Who wants to take a real hard stab at this? Lewis, you're going to stand up to the plate on this one. Yeah, because then I can be corrected by the experts, you see? Mm. So, uh, ba basically, uh, the way I say it, probably it's, it's a little bit naive, but at the end of the day, everything that happens in standards, and I think in open source is the same thing, is, is bottom up. Actually, it's, it's all these people around this room that, uh, in fact, get together to work on standard or work on, on, on a specific uh, implementation solutions that uh, know how things are going. So they perfectly know, I mean, again, with uh, Linux Foundation ourselves and, and many others, we've laid the basics. Now it's, hey guys, use your tools. Go, go ahead, do it. Uh, it's, it's the same companies who are uh, contributing to both Parts, and we've heard Nurit saying it, so they will make it happen. So I think it's, it's very much on their shoulders now and um, um, have to be yeah. corrected. I mean, from a system integrator's standpoint, if I were to comment on that, and especially the fact that we are also working closely with OTTs, show us one OTT who gives so much of importance to standards and keep discussing this again and again over the years and years, right? Mm -hmm. All they are catering about is the business objectives and pay attention to standards only where there is a compliance issue or a regulatory issue. Otherwise, as and I agree, you know, just move on. Uh, the standards are defined, take that as a guideline and uh, just go ahead and uh, put it to production. Yeah. Sebastian. <laughs> I think we can, we can even do a little bit more because you were asking what is different next year when uh, we meet or not meet you here in the same environment. And I think we need to make the things we discussed and the ideas we had over these past two days, we make them more sustainable. And um, I envision that we at least uh, come together, put together uh, some of the ideas which were uh, expressed by, by you actually and um, then make it kind of official document and uh, distribute it among the participants and ask for support uh, and would say this is where we see the ecosystem to change. And these are the concrete steps we want to take as an industry and we feel that they are necessary in order um, to move uh, to the future.